it's time to take a look at the barreled weapons that have been released in the last update. Now, the barreled weapons are capital ship turrets and missiles that are used against subcapitals, for example, battleships and battlecruisers. However, they can also be used against cruisers and frigates. But of course, you have to use webs and tracking computers to hit the smaller ships. How do they work? Well, we are about to find that out uh, very soon. They should have lower DPS and higher rate of fire, but they should have a lot better tracking than the main turrets. Now, I will start with the Morus because I wasn't flying this ship a lot and I kind of want to change that. And I also have a very nice nano core in the background that will be uh, that will give off some very nice effects. Now, the Moros is a armor tank, an active armor tank. It has one of the best armor repairs in the game. And the other stats are quite comparable to the other capital ships. The Moros has, I think, the best tracking, but unfortunately has the shortest range on the main turrets. However, the range on the high-angle weapons should also uh, be about the same. I expect them to be at least a couple kilometers shorter than the main turrets. Now currently have 853.35 VPS, this is without the showdown or without the siege mode. And these are the high angle blasters. Activation time 2.9 seconds, optimal 21.84, accuracy 24.96 and tracking is 5.27. Now the tracking is somewhere between the bla the it's between the blasters, the large blasters for battleships and the large uh, railguns. The main turrets, the main uh, railgun turrets have much lower tracking and I will show that in a moment. So let's compare them. Now the alpha damage on the main turrets is of course a lot, a lot better. However, the activation time 5.79 seconds, the range is a little bit higher and the accuracy, the tracking 0.86. So, you sacrifice a lot of DPS, a lot of alpha damage, but you get much better, much better accuracy and tracking on the, on the high angle weapons. I mean, that's, uh, that's their purpose, after all. Uh, they have better tracking so that you can hit the smaller targets. Basically, a dreadnought that's designed to fight off the sub-capital ships. Now, in the medium slots, I have one scrambler, triple webs, and one large Nosferatu. You can replace the large Nosferatu with a neutralizer, however, capital ships, capital neutralizer and Nosferatu don't affect subcapitals because of a penalty. In the low slots, dual adaptives, dual batteries, dual tracking computers and dual armor repairs. Now I really like this build because you get decent tank, you get decent capacitor, you get really good uh, accuracy and you get really nice armor repairs. Now as for the rigs, well I did go with DPS rigs just to see what the what these turrets can do. And in the engineering rigs, the classic past rigs, no integrations surprisingly. And now let's undock and let me show you uh, how how the space potato works or space snail. This ship has a lot of nicknames. I prefer to call it the space Undocking. potato, but a snail also works because, you know, it has that interesting look, like a snail. Overall, the Moros is a very unique looking Galanta ship. It kind of looks menacing, honestly. Now, I forgot to show you the implants. Uh, you can use the thermal circulation if you want to get extra tank. Now, this is an implant that uh, is excellent for armor tanks. I like to use it for the passive armor effect. I don't really like to use the thermal for the DPS because you have to be careful not to hit the overheat. If you go into the overheat, then your rate of fire will be significantly reduced. Now, the high power coil implant is the implant that I like to run on the uh, railgun ships. It has a very nice damage boost. It does last a very long time and there is no cooldown that you have to worry about. For the general units, I went with a build that will focus on tracking, capacitor performance, capacitor battery performance, Nosferatu and neutralizer uh, efficiency. I think the neutralizer is actually for the for range, while the Nosferatu is for the uh, strength. Now again, the large, I mean the capital Nosferatus and neutralizers will not work on subcapitals. 
with the exception on Blood Raiders. On Blood Raiders it should work, because of the, well, overall penalty that the Blood Raiders have, but the other normal ships don't have that, so it will not work that Undocking. well. And the large neutralizer uh, is also not going to work on sub capitals if you are using a non-Blood Raider ship. That is something that the game has inherited from EVE Online, and I really like that. Okay, so have the thermal circulation, although I was pretty sure that I did fit the high power curl, but never mind. I will show you how the um, how the tank looks with this build, and I will show you um, the DPS that we can get out of this ship. 1.8 million is the tank, 75, 73, 74, and 63. Of course, the tank will be lower because I did go with the DPS rigs on the Moros, but in the end the tank build is the way to go for your capital ship because these things are huge, they're slow, they're very easy to catch and well, very easy to kill if you don't have a good tank. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the DPS, 7.1 thousand with the siege mode active. Now let's open fire and let's use the thermal implant. Now with the thermal implant activated you will lose tank because the extra armor resistance comes from the passive effect. 0 to 30 hit, above that it doesn't work. Still the DPS is the same, the DPS will kick in once the hit is a little bit more high up. Until then we can enjoy the the beautiful effects of the nanocore and the blasters. The blasters looks a look absolutely stunning. Uh, the new effects are amazing. And I really like them. The space potato looks very nice with the with this nanocore. And the extra effects that the nanocore comes with are also very nice. However, they do have a uh, hardware impact. My phone is cooking at the moment. 14,336.25 DPS once the implant kicks in. Of course, we have to be careful not to let the heat go, go to 100, because if that happens, well, it will slowly enter a cooldown and you will lose the rate of fire. So I will turn off the implant to prevent the cooldown from kicking in and you will, you will retain the DPS for a little longer. So not really a implant that uh, I like to use for the VPS. However, if you, li if you like the thermal implant, then you should use it because overall it's very nice. And with, with the computers active, 10.63 is the tracking speed, which honestly it's not bad, I like it, it's pretty good. However, this will last for about 10 seconds and then it will enter cooldown. It's very good when you have to focus down one frigate that is swept, because even, even with this tracking you will have issues to hit the small ships. And I don't mind that, uh, I guess it's a, a very nice balance factor. So basically a zero kilometer orbit and you are safe from uh, from the new barreled high angle turrets. Okay, now let me go and take the high power call. Now I personally really like the high power call because it has a very stable damage output and it lasts for a very long time. However, you don't get a tank bonus from this implant, basically a raw DPS, and I went with the same unit layout. Now the DPS is 132, a little bit a little bit higher because of the implant, but let's see how much DPS I can get when the implant is active and Undocking. let's see how the rest of the ship will look. Okay, let's stop the space potato before it glides out of range. Let's lock on the station. Okay. Locking on. The tank will be lower, of course, 74, 66, 67, and 54% resistance. Which, for a dreadnought, is not that good. But you have very nice armor repairs, so we can kind of... We can kind of run the ship with, with a setup like this. However, I will still go full tank. Okay, implant active, and let's take a look at the, dp at the DPS, 1398, okay, I forgot siege mode, my, my bad, I forgot the main, the main thing on Dreadnoughts, 7.8 thousand is the, is the DPS, because my implant has turned off, my, my bad, with the implant active, 11,700, 
43.26 VPS, which is a little bit lower than the thermal, but it's a lot more stable. And you get about the same tracking on the on the turrets. Now you can go with the classic targeting computer without the unit for tracking or range, but I prefer to have extra tracking just because of the small ships that can easily tackle this monster. And well, let's just enjoy for a moment, uh, let's just enjoy the effects for a moment. Again, uh, the new turrets have awesome animations, you will see the animations on all of the dreadnoughts I believe, this is just the first one that I started with, and the first one that I will do a video on. I think also I will cover this in a live stream, because why not? Uh, one way to deal with a lot of new things that ones that have been released today. And well, uh, let's go and let's see how this monster works inside of a mission. Now excuse me for taking so many pictures, I just really like how the ship looks with the background. I think it's very easy to make a thumbnail out of this, I don't know. And the extra Warp effects are also active. awesome. You know, one thing that I hate to admit, they do create very good looking Alocors, and if the way to obtain them was only a little bit different, only a little bit different, I would not complain at all, but yeah, they do know how to make something nice, and I'll give them that. Okay, let's see how the space potato works inside of this mission. You know, from the back, this kind of looks like the Erebus, which is a Titan, which will be released uh, next year, as uh, we have learned on the uh, on the Ask Me Anything a couple days ago. I'm not gonna fly a Titan, I have nowhere to park it, but I will definitely do videos on it, because why not? Okay, I have a very bad feeling about this. I've never done a mission with a Dreadnought. I did missions with a Carrier, you know, I did missions with Battleships, but not with a Dreadnought. This this is something that I haven't attempted, because I know for a fact that uh, I would not be able to hit anything. Now, let's see how... Uh, how will this work? And also, uh, yeah, the shield effects are also uh, damn amazing. This Endlocker might be one of the best, the best looking ones. That's why I did pick it for this ship, for this video, because why not? thought that it would look awesome and man, I'm <laughs> I'm blown away kind of. Uh, I ex did not expect that it has a shield effect, but I guess it has. So, uh, so far nasty alpha, it's basically about the same alpha damage as uh, you would do with the Megatron Striker. After all, the these turrets are basically turrets for, from battleships. As you can see from the hole, uh, it's uh, three battleship turrets slapped into one turret. That worked like one turret, but it's uh, three different turrets working simultaneously. And overall, I would say that's a very interesting design, a uh, very interesting choice. The damage output is not what I would what I expected. I expected this to be a lot more, let's say, overpowered, but uh, I guess the low damage output is kind of a balancing factor. The rate of fire is quite satisfying. It does feel uh, very fun to use now, of course. Uh, when you, if you, if you ever decide to fly a uh, dreadnought for missions, be very careful because once you enter a siege mode, you have two minutes of basically being dead in the water. You can move and you can't turn off the siege mode. So, be very careful. Very easy to tackle. Very easy to lose your ship uh, if you get caught in the cooldown. Now, the thing that I would do, I, I would land, I would align myself, and I would have a scout that would look at the entry to my, uh, to my pocket. That way, if something comes in, I have time to react and, you know, uh, basically warp out if needed. That's what I would do. Or you can technically slap a cocking device, an afterburner, or a micro drive and use the micro drive insta warp trick to quickly go uh, to safety. Of course, that will not work in the siege mode, but you can wait out for the siege mode to end and then warp out. So, there's a lot of uh, ways how uh, this can work. Now, don't be fooled by the easiness of which I can uh, hit the small ships. This is the second video that, I, uh, that I'm doing, uh, the first one that I assembled, I wasn't really happy with the results, so 
I decided to delete that and to basically record something new. When I tried this for the first time, uh, I, I had a miserable failure because I equipped two ups, wasn't enough, uh, and well, it took me like three hours to leave the mission because I was scrambled. So yeah, three ups, tracking computers, and I wouldn't say that it's necessary to have a unit to have a tracking computer general unit. I think it's not necessary to have a tracking computer general unit, but tracking computers. And a lot of webs are definitely a must-have if you plan to use this for missions. Why? Well, because hitting small targets is still quite difficult. You have to remember that you have good tracking, you have almost battleship tracking, but at the same time, it's not quite there as the, let's say, odd cans from battleships. So the tracking will be lower. It's similar, but it's not really there yet. Which means you will have issues to hit small targets if you don't slow them down enough. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And this can be said for basically all uh, all of the other uh, barreled weapons. They have nice tracking. The Moros has the highest DPS because blasters have the highest alpha damage and overall highest DPS. But they have the shortest range. The revelation as you will see uh, in a in the, in the next video will have a decent range but it will have lower damage and I believe it will have lower tracking but I'm not really sure about that again uh, we'll have to uh, see uh, that when I do the video because you know me I don't like to I don't like to give false information so uh, I like to be a hundred percent a hundred percent sure uh, when I say uh, when I say something but is this usable for missions well Yes, uh, yes it is. Now, not quite as efficient and I would say not quite as effective as a battleship, for example. Uh, the battleships have better tracking and overall they feel more, more natural uh, inside of a mission. But if you like capital ships, then I guess this can work as well. Of course, as I mentioned before, uh, highly risky, super risky. Uh, extremely risky to uh, to eat a capital dreadnought in a mission in low sec. Don't do that. Uh, this is just an example of what the turrets can do. I don't say do missions in low sec with a dreadnought. That's not going to end well. Uh, don't do missions with capital ships in low sec unless it's a carrier. Then it might work because the carriers have those fighters and the fighters can easily deal with a tackle ship. So. I guess a carrier does have uh, a very, a very interesting use, a very different use. But at the same time, the carriers also fall short in some other aspects. So in the end, it really depends uh, on the situation. But again, please don't eat a dreadnought in low sec. I'll be the first one to tackle that, so don't do that. Okay. <laughs> However, in low sec, that's a whole different story. In low sec, if you have your pocket, if you are a part of if you're part of a big coalition or alliance, and of course, if you're not at war, which is also a very important uh, aspect, then you can safely run the anomalies, you can run the capital ship rifts, you can run all of the dead space anomalies and stuff like that with with this, uh, with a ship that's built in a similar way, with the high angle weapons, works really well. So, uh, yeah, the risk will be there, but at the same time, you will have, you probably will have scouts that will uh, notify you if there is danger incoming. So, uh, you have enough time to warp out, cloak, dock, or whatever the preferred response to an incoming threat can be. Now, in my case, uh, am I going to switch to the high angle weapons on my revelation? That's a good question. Now, one reason why I would. Uh, use them is so that I can just relax for a moment and not use my alts all the time because using the alt account can be quite can be quite stressful I've shot my alt by accident that's uh, what I mean by stressful so uh, high angle weapons can be good if you like to solo camp and if your primary targets are sub capitals I can see myself uh, use those weapons on the revelation however if I use the Daredevil tackle, I don't really have to. Uh, I don't really have to use the high angle weapons because the Daredevil can slow down the target to such an extent that even the low tracking uh, without a tracking computer on the main turrets 
is enough to hit a Dramiel with an afterburner going full speed. So, in the end, it really depends on your situation. If you have an alt, uh, then I guess you can use both. I would say attack. it's the safe bet to use the high angle weapons for camps if your targets are sub capless. However, if you get jumped by a capital ship, a carrier, or or something similar to that, then your high angle weapons will not be, let's say, that effective because of the lower alpha, lower DPS, and overall lower damage output. The main turrets are more suitable for capital versus capital, while the high angle turrets are more suitable for capital versus sub capital. However, uh, you still can do damage to the capital ships. It will not be as effective and uh, as big as uh, the damage that you would do on the on the capital ship with the main turrets. Now, the one ship that is a little bit different, uh, and uh, the one ship that might give me headaches, is the Phoenix, because missiles. And I think the Phoenix video will be one of the, one of the more, let's say, uh, one of the videos where I did a lot of math just to try to uh, get my idea working. Now, the idea with the other turret, uh, turret dreadnoughts works flawlessly, as you can see. I, I have absolutely no issues with demolishing all of these ships. However, the Phoenix did give me some small issues. And uh, I, I won't say that the Phoenix is bad. The Phoenix has a very nice place uh, in the game. It's a monster in capital versus capital ship fights. Couple Phoenix Dreadnoughts can eat a tank Dreadnought in basically couple hits because of the insane alpha damage that they can do. So the Phoenix has its place and the Phoenix is an awesome ship so uh, I want to get it to work and that's why I did decide to uh, do a little bit more math on that one and I think the result will be pretty good. I already did most of the work so uh, you will see the final result but I did spend a bit more time on the Phoenix just to get my idea working and I'm, I'm there. You will see what I'm talking about uh, very, very soon. The Milotar Dreadnought, that one is going to be the most popular one I believe. It has a very nice balance between DPS, very nice balance between tracking and range. So the Milotar Dreadnought with the high angle weapons is going to be a monster. So if you have that one, uh, you will definitely love to get the high angle weapons. Of course, uh, one thing that I would advise you to do is to wait for the price to go down or, well, uh, if you're part of a big alliance then you can get them for free basically if you run the capital sites that drop the modules. So yeah, currently the high angle weapons cost about 6 billion, which is uh, a lot of kidneys for just one third and that's not even a C type, so yeah, quite quite a premium item on the market at the moment, but that's that's okay. Uh, after all, all the new things are quite pricey at start, so I'll wait for the price to go down a little bit. The price around, let's say, 200 million would be okay, would be acceptable. Above 200 million, yeah, it's not going to be a very smart, uh, very smart purchase, but overall, uh, if you can get them for free, go get them for free, because those weapons are very nice, and... I'm fairly sure a lot of you guys will enjoy using them. Because I know a lot of you have been waiting for the high angle weapons and... I personally, like I said before, don't need them because I already have the Daredevil Tackle and my situation is a little bit unique because I don't really do PvE with my ship. Most of my ships are focused for PvP, but if you have a capital ship that's just sitting there catching dust, then you can make a PvE boat out of your dreadnought. Now, one thing that uh, I will still use a carrier for is uh, is ratting in Olsek because a carrier can move uh, while you are in the sensor mode, and that's a lot safer than sitting still with one of these monsters. So. Doesn't matter if you have a carrier, doesn't matter if you have a dreadnought, uh, you can use both. Both are amazing ships, both are amazing ship classes, and now both are viable for basically anything that you wish for. And I think that's a very uh, big part of the game, a bit to make uh, any ship work for basically anything that you want. In my case, if I run missions, I use a Macariel, I don't use the, 
the laser boat because, well, my laser boats are for PvP. And the Macaria is for PvP as well, but I just like to use the Macaria for missions. It's not the, let's say, the fastest clearing, clearing ship, it's definitely not the highest DPS ship. Definitely not the best ship for missions, but uh, I have fun flying it and that's uh, what matters the most. Having fun while playing the game is what matters the most, doesn't matter what you fly. So yeah, uh, that's uh, one very important thing to remember. If you can have fun with a battleship, you also can have fun flying a capital. You also can have fun flying a interceptor or frigate. Okay, now my apologies for the for the stutters there. The the phone is going a little bit potato mode on me, and I had to turn on the temperature monitor because this is not lag because the phone does have enough power it's lag because of thermal throttling i guess even winter can help with the with the heat this all this always happens when i plug in the mouse and start recording not really sure why but it it's not that bad it just makes me a little bit confused at some at some points because uh yeah and of course I run the game at 90 to 120 frames per second, which is quite rare, so um, I can't really be mad at the phone for throttling. But overall, clearing the mission very quickly. Now in the previous run I got about 35 to 45 thousand per mission tick. Basically, you can get some very nice ESC payouts with, uh, with with these monsters. It is comparable to the Apocalypse Tiger with implants, although I believe the Apocalypse still uh, does a bit better because of the better tracking. And of course, the Apocalypse doesn't have any issues with hitting the smaller targets. But this monster does uh, get the job done. And I'm personally quite satisfied with the high angle weapons. Mostly set aside because they aren't as busted and overpowered as I thought that they would be. Now I did say uh, that I expected about minus 50% damage. In some cases it's, uh, it's actually minus 75% damage if we compare them with the main turrets. However you get some really nice tracking. I think the low damage output uh, is a very nice balancing factor. And of course it's also very nice that they don't have uh, battleship low tracking. It's between the battleship oil cans and battleship artillery cans tracking something in between. Not quite both, but uh, in between. And you can, you can get battleship tracking if you use the tracking computers. Which is what I am doing uh, with this ship at the moment. And so far, yes, it's working really, really well. Now, one thing that you have to watch out for uh, is the range with this ship. The blasters have about 23-25 km range. They will hit up to 40-45 without a problem, but your damage will significantly fall off. Because, well, that's what blasters do. So, um, might be an issue when the target floats away from you. If the target is uh, really, f let, let's say, at 50-60 km, then it might be a problem. But anything below that, uh, you will hit them without, a without any issues. And... There's a chance that you might have to approach them, but again, that should not be a big issue. So overall, a very nice, very nice ship. Now as for the build, you can use the magnetic stabilizers, however you will sacrifice a lot of tank. And this is where, uh, this is something that I did on the first video that, that I did, that, well, I never uploaded. Because I really did not want to see uh, glass cannon capital ships out there. Because the glass cannon dreadnoughts, while having nice DPS, will have basically no, no defense. And a glass dreadnought is not going to be uh, not going to live long. Because if it gets tackled, it will be dead before help can even respond. So that's why I didn't show you the the glass cannon build. Now I'm not saying you can't use a glass cannon. If you if you have a let's say a force auxiliary alt that can repair your ship, then I guess you can uh, use a glass cannon, but 
uh, that gave me the flashback of a Moros that got yeeted in Nolsec that did have no tank, well, no active tank, uh, and they had a Force Auxiliary with them. Unfortunately, the Force Auxiliary and the Dreadnought died. So, yeah, uh, not really a good idea to go uh, full glass. It's doable, of course, you can do it if you want to, but it is not something that I recommend doing. In a fleet, then I can see it work well, but even in a fleet, uh, I would still... I would still keep the tank, uh, just because of safety. After all, Dreadnoughts are meant to have good DPS, but at the same time, Dreadnoughts are known to be bricks, they're known to be extremely tanky, extremely hard to kill, and that's why uh, I went with the with the current build that I did show you here. Well then, that was a very nice and smooth mission. Uh, honestly, a very different thing that, uh, that I tried here. Uh, it works, uh, it works very well. So if you plan to, if you're waiting for the high end weapons, then uh, they are here, you can use them. You can use them for PvP, for missions, for encounters, for dead space anomalies, for, for camping, basically anything you like. Uh, will we'll work well. However, you will have to sacrifice tank, you have to sacrifice some uh, small things like that in order to compensate for the low tracking and if you want to hit the small ships you have to fit attack computers in order to be able to track them and kill them. So am I happy with the with, with the weapons? I'm happy with the more so yes I am. Uh, a very nice, a very fun ship honestly and uh, I'm very excited to see how the other how the other dreadnoughts will work and, and of course uh, I'm mostly excited for the Phoenix because a lot of players that have the Phoenix are interested to see uh, how to get that monster working and well with that being said hope that you enjoyed hope that this video could help you at building the Morse and hope that the hang weapons will uh, work well in your case and on your ship with that being said stay safe fly safe and as always I'll see you next time